Cardboard Pizza 3 with extra cheese. Five Nights at Frank's can be illustrated by sitting you on top of a bull that's calm and collective and passively walking, and then it slaps the bull's ass and watches it take off angrily as you fling around on top, having no idea what you're supposed to do or how to write it. In fact, I actually googled how to play Five Nights at Fabio's, and this guy who has gone so far as to beat something called Nightmare Mode concluded in his guide that he wrote about the game saying, Too long, didn't read. With this game, you end up dying 20 times on nights 3 through 5, only to realize after the fifth night, you still have no idea how the game mechanics work. I feel like the first night was supposed to be a night solely for introducing you to the new setting and to show you how the new mechanics work, because there's no threat at all as you swap through the cameras and take in the scenery. However, it does an extremely poor job of explaining anything, and the surfer dude on the phone simply tells you that your camera feeds on the right and your maintenance panel sits all the way over on the other side of your screen to the left. The next thing you know, oh, it's 6am, and the tone of this game quickly changes as the very next night you are stalked by an enemy you've never previously encountered in the last game. This new guy, apparently named Springtrap, is the most deadly animatronic to date. Now that is just him being the one who's moving around the environment, he has two different standing animations for each room. This is unlike the original games, or at least unlike the first game, because I never really used the cameras in the second game. If you memorize where each animatronic can stand in each of the rooms, you can bounce through the cameras and map out where each of them are fairly easily. However, with Springtrap, it's not so simple. The new place is much darker, the security camera feeds are way fuzzier and take longer to switch through, and Springtrap is one of the best hide-and-seek players I've ever had the displeasure of seeking. When you take into consideration that these are still images without the map at the bottom and without the screen having that horrendous security camera fuzz on top, it seems almost ridiculous that I'm supposed to know that he's standing right here, especially since you can only kind of see part of his leg when the flickering light is on. Or here, where he looks like a trash can or some kind of chair at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. This also means that he's behind the map of the security cameras when standing here. And I'm not even going to talk about how many times hiding behind this disassembled Bonnie frame in camera 2 has fooled me. He's a crafty bastard, and he almost plays with his food in a sense. He just toys around with you, peeking into your office like Bonnie used to, or just, just directly staring at you through your office window. The last two installments in the Five Nights at Franny series had camera systems that were mostly used to ever only cover a single room for the sole purpose of avoiding death from the animatronic that resides in that room. In the first game, you were always keeping tabs on Foxy in Pirate's Cove, making sure he stayed behind his curtain and knew when to shut the door when he came sprinting down the hallway. That was annoying, but definitely not as game-breaking as in Five Nights 2, where you had to open the camera feed to remotely wind up this music box so you're not instantly killed by the Dark Knight surprises. Thankfully, this time around, there's none of that. You have to use the cameras the way that I always felt that they should have been used in the first place, and that's to find and keep track of the animatronics, or in this case, animatronics. Although FNAF 3 does almost completely do away with the characters from the last two games, Springtrap is not the only threat, and they do return in the form of hallucinations. Well, at least most of them do. The only animatronic character who does not appear physically nor in hallucination is Bonnie, both toy and original versions of himself. There is a cute little plush of him right there. These hallucinations will jump scare you, but they don't kill you and end your game. What they will do is disable your ventilation, camera, or audio systems, which can leave you open to attack from Springtrap. After seeing Balloon Boy's jump scare once, I've been able to avoid it ever since because of how recognizable it is, but Mangle's hallucination gets me almost every time because of how short it is before he jams your audio, and the fact I can barely see him hanging from the ceiling in several areas because of how dark it is. The scariest hallucination, in my opinion, is definitely Cheek of the Chickens, though, because of the randomness of her strike and the fact you never know if you switch to another camera fast enough when you see her, because of the fact you have to drop the cameras and look to the left of your office before she jump scares you. Speaking of looking to the left to get jump scared, Foxy the Pirate also makes an appearance in this game as a hallucination. You don't trigger him to spawn by looking at something too long in the cameras, in fact I doubt you trigger his arrival in your office at all. You'll just be randomly standing in your office sometimes, and if you don't see him in time and you look all the way to the left of the screen, he'll dive at you and scream. Also, might I mention that when you start Night 4, Foxy and Chica have a chance to instantly jump scare you upon entering the level. And for the first time since Foxy running down the hallway in the first game, you actually get to witness an animatronic physically moving outside of a jump scare death screen. Springtrap, Mangle, and even Mr. Fagbear himself all appear moving outside your office window. 
And this is actually pretty strange to me, because whenever an animatronic moved in the original, they always deployed an EMP burst and jammed your cameras to give them time to move from one spot to another. Springtrap apparently doesn't need to do this though, at least not very long. You get camera static for like half a second and BOOM! He's gone. EXCUSE ME, HOW DOES HE DO THAT?! Even in the second game, when the animatronics are standing right there in the room with you, they don't move a muscle until they jump scare you. But with each sequel of Five Nights at Floyd's, it's been slowly stripped of its core mechanics, using the doors to keep unwanted visitors out of your office and lights to see down hallways and such. It's kinda weird to me that these are both absent from the third installment. I get that it's dumb to say a door requires power to stay shut, and that's why it wasn't in the second game, but I thought we would at least get some kind of door light, flashlight, or vent light. Instead, now we have the maintenance panel, and with that comes the audio system. And to be honest, it took me about seven deaths to figure out how the hell the audio actually works. Selecting a camera and then pressing the little audio system button will make Balloon Boy say hi. And it turns out that Springtrap's actually lured to the sound of Balloon Boy, but if you want to make him move from room to room, he has to be standing in the adjacent room. God, it's so confusing! Anyway, you can use this mechanic to make him stand in a certain room or to push him back a few rooms so that you can have time to restart your system. The last thing I found intriguing, and that I was honestly surprise could even be accessed even though they were in the second game were mini games. Sure, you play a mini game after completing each night, but now you can trigger certain mini games by clicking on certain things. Supposedly there are like four or five or like seventy of these mini games according to the wiki page, but the only one I've activated so far is a Chica mini game in which you deliver cupcakes to sad children. And I triggered this by clicking on these four little burnt cupcakes around the map that disappear when you click on them. Apparently the way you complete these minigames, or if you even complete them at all, gives you a good or bad ending after beating the fifth night, but god knows I'll never get that far in this game. So now it's time to give my rating of the game, my final verdict. So because it's the third Five Nights at Fernando's game, and because I can't even beat the third f***ing night, this game gets a three. Out of three. It's a, it's a, it's a third time, you know what they say, they say, they say third time's the charm. Third time, it's a master. It's a, it's a, it's a masterpiece. It's a master. Oh my God, ah, there he is. He's right there. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, don't oh God. scream. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. Uh huh.